Hello there everyone, I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, and thank you for joining me here in TNO, the Lessons of Europe, in which we're exploring and playing as the Republic of China. So if you'd like to read about their lore, please go right ahead. Now, obviously, in TNO, or in World War II, China lost, and uh, they're probably not having a really good time in the Japanese. Well, right now they're our uh, big daddy, we'll call them, even though we might not really like them. But, you know, it is what it is. Apparently we can sway the Yuan... Which is basically, I think, our legislative body. So if you like to read about this, please go right ahead. Basically, we have three factions in our government that we kind of have to keep relatively happy, including the Japanese faction, the old guard faction, and the reformers faction, which I'm personally wanting to push for the reformers uh, faction in this campaign. But we'll see what happens right now. Influence is 34%, 52%, and 27%. 50, 60, 50 opinion out of 100, 60 opinion, and 50 opinion. Even though I do want to clamp down on corruption. Just because, well, we lose political power, but we get better consumer goods, construction speed, and, uh, you know, we might try to do that. The inevitable disease of every government, corruption. While things aren't quite as bad as they were during the times of Chiang. The old guards' less and subtle backroom dealings speak for themselves. Of course, they're not the only per perpetrators inside the Yuan. But they're by far the most involved faction. However, the reformists have been calling on the government to curb the worst excesses of the government for some time now. And the proposal could bring us a few benefits. The extra funds saved from going down the gutters of corruption could certainly come in handy. It certainly won't please the old guard, but... Oh well. You know, if this blows up, it blows up. And this is our focus here. So we can do stuff about technology. We can do stuff about industrialization, which I do want to do. And we also can do stuff about education. Eventually get to the conference in which China must unite against its greatest foe. Education. Um, let's see. Monthly, 1% monthly innovation gain. Oh, boy. Japanese file faction by 2.5%. Import Japanese computer design. Sounds kind of cool. Or industrialization. Let's do that one first. The third of the modernizations, industrialization, is vital to our development as a modern nation. How can we expect to reassert our leading role in Asia if we grow rice but cannot build a single rifle or mine a single piece of silver? That's not very good. So right now, we obviously as China, no matter what, we have a lot of population. We can we can barely build. Ooh, the five modernizations though. Drawn upon Gao's ultimate dream for China. The five modernizations are his plans to overhaul and modernize China's industrial, educational, military, research, and national capabilities. Finally, after years of elaborating, editing, and finalizing the designs for the greatest governmental push in recent Chinese history, the modernizations are waiting to begin. However, all's not well in Gao's realm. The Japanese may not be happy with the Chinese transform transforming further than their breadbasket. And the process will certainly be painful. Progress comes with change in the with change. There are those who are left behind. In the end, those who have sacrificed their lives for the Chinese dream will be honored. Until then, we must tread carefully as we navigate the five modernizations. A call for national renewal has been sent by Gao, and his efforts are already underway. In a matter of years, China will be a modern nation, one to be envied, and of course not pitied. We'll take back our place in the world, followed up with what? Um, let's do education after that one. The first of the modernizations, education is a pressing matter for our country. Most of our population is illiterate, and we need them to be able to read and write in order to challenge Japan. And we get 0.39 political power every single day, and all we can do is show and hide interactions with this old guard and the Japanese faction and the reformists, which is fine. So we take other actions here, huh? Influence and opinion. Decrease Japanese faction opinion by 15. Increase ja Ooh, oh yeah, we all, I forgot about that. We also have uh, the economy here, so we actually have a deficit. Nope. Mm -hmm. Alright, so 3%. Not, that's not actually not too bad. Our debt is a little bigger than our GDP, but with an annual deficit like this, I'm not too, that's not too bad with the German moon landing. The skies seem to call to the Chinese. Through the constellations, we have charted each and every star visible to the human eye. Our navigators, venturing out into the unknown, have used the stars to explore the most distant places known humanity. The Germans, however, have done much more than dream of the heavens. In fact, they've reached them. Only a few short days ago, the Germans have sent a rocket to the moon with a man on board. The celestial object that was once untouchable has now been touched. Ooh, and by German hands nonetheless. Eberhard Kölner was the first to call Earth from the moon, speaking to Daddy, Adolf Hitler, before embarking on a dubiously robust science mission. Perhaps one day the Chinese may wave back to Earth from the sea of tranquility. Man has transcended his earthly roots. So I won't get more PP so we can do some of this stuff. What are the options we have here? So, stamp out overzealous nationalists? Uh, I don't know about that, maybe. An assassin strikes at Mr. Schmittler. Modernization awareness campaigns. That's not bad. Oh, remove 400 additional annual expenses. We get more stability in war support. Slightly accelerate progress towards improving our academic base and research base and stuff like that. Oh, that's not bad. And reformists in the cabinet. What does this one do? Um, It's basically sort of the same. Oh, no, no. This one is what? Increase reformist actions and decrease old guard and Japanese faction influence. Okay. Wow, that really hurts the pee-pee. 
and Goring is the successor. Hopefully he'll do okay. But after education, we're going to go ahead and do technology. Despite all of our manpower and resources, we cannot hope to match the industrial output of Japan and their geopolitical rivals. What separates us from them is the depressing state of our technology and equipment standards. If we're ever to compete on the international scene, we must resolve this. And also, why are we losing fuel? Oh, we're building factories, that's why. Yeah, we're only building one, which is super bad. But hey, we'll see what happens. General industrial development. Okay. So China's a land full of mineral and human resources. We need to be exploited by industrial means to further accelerate the sluggish industrialization of the Middle Kingdom. We can funnel a good amount of our national budget into both state-owned and private enterprises. Death of Hu Xi. Hu Xi, famous for his pivotal role in the language reform and education modernization, has quietly passed away in his sleep in the comfort of his Shanghai home. A true patriot. He defected to the legitimate Chinese government and, despite his controversial politics, devoted his life and work towards his country. His greatest contribution was a smooth conversion of ch classical Chinese to... Hao Thuan, vernacular Chinese in writing, bringing China one step closer to modernity. Its memory can be honored in only one way, the modernization of China. He was a great man. Weekly opinion. Oh. Increase. Mo oh. Increase is modified by 70%. Decrease is modified by 130%. Okay. Clamp down on corruption still. That's good. Expand state on businesses. A sizable portion of the country's industrial sector rests within the hands of the Republican government. We can use some of our liquid reserves to further expand our industrial capabilities. Oh, we actually get a free civvy that way. Oh, that's kind of cool. We remove half a billion from our liquid reserves and gain half, set three quarters of a billion to annual expenses until the end of the decision. We lose a consumer good factory. We get one civvy period. Now, is that better than getting more construction stuff? Um, if we do this, we can use 10% more civvies. We get up to 60% utilization. We get minus 8% consumer goods and better construction costs. Well, construction costs as well. You know what? Getting one more civvy. Let's see what we do with that. Okay, so we, instead of getting one, which what that decision would have given us, we actually got two more right now, which I think is better overall. Even though it's still going to take forever to get it done, so whatever. Educational progress gain. Educational progress. Ooh, research speed goes up. I like that. And we, we will take out national spirits in just a little bit. I do want to do a lot of industrialization. I want a massive Chinese industry. But then again, can people really be industrial if they can't read and write? Maybe a little bit, but... Education reform. A nation is only as strong as its most educated people, and frankly, the highest echelon of Chinese education is hardly equivalent to that of Japan's. President Gao Zongwu has recognized the poor state of Chinese education and so have the people. Hordes of letters occupy the president's desk, all of them pleased for help, as the ever-innovating world continues to rush past us. Hundreds of thousands of Chinese workers are forlorn, left wondering how they'll be able to provide for their families. To combat mass illiteracy and its consequences on the efficiency of the government, Zongwu has issued a general reform of the education system, promising sweeping changes to the country's attitude towards literacy, these reforms will all be encompassed within the modernization program of education. Gao's offensive against a pathetic or educational system comes in three-pronged attacks. Firstly, the people must read. Increasing literacy sounds simple enough, but with such a massive and widely dispersed population, ensuring everyone can read will be no easy feat. To ensure the next generation of Chinese students receive the best education, the reform proposal also calls for hosting intellectuals from Japan. Finally, once students meet the bare minimum of reading and writing, as taught by highly qualified Japanese teachers, we will grant them a revitalized and modern curriculum. The goals set by the proposal seem far fetched, but if they can be accomplished, they will surely set the stage for modern China. Reform isn't optional, it's an absolute necessity. 100%. Is there any way we increase our PP gain? Still 0.47, so, hmm. Innovation is not bad. I don't mind doing a lot of this stuff. Reading and writing, eh. research speed. There's nothing about PP. The, two Ch the Chinese economic report. For all steps that Japan and the national government have taken to improve the Chinese economy, there's still a long ways to go before it could become the economic power that the sphere demanded it be. Although the coastal cities have come a long way from the war-torn remnants of the end of the Sino-Japanese War, most larger settlements were still in the same condition they, has, they had been for much of the 20th century. Agriculture was still a dominant part of the economy. Thanks to the largely undeveloped parts of the countryside, rural life had changed somewhat. A great number of farms have been consolidated into the holdings of a handful of companies. Other communities had survived mostly untouched, left out to carry their lives in near isolation, with only occasional contact from the regional authorities to ensure that their presence was still felt. The progression of ending Agarian economic dominance was slowing down. It would take many years until China could be considered a nation with a modern economy. Critics, or cities, would also require far more investment. The countryside needed it more so, in order to even make the land useful for the industrial sector. It was now time for the Chinese president to make his report on the state of the economy. An objective and transparent report was the obvious answer, although that carried the inevitable consequences of Japan's stern disapproval. 
Fear of disappointment aside, Tokyo was not the most abs astute of masters. They were unlikely to notice few slight altercations to the report. Regardless, the president would need to make his decision without delay. Inflate the numbers for its own good? No need to lie. We are not going to lie here at all. At least for now. Oh, we can't even make any more divisions. Which makes sense because we're going to have a little bit of a conflict. So, <clears throat> I'm taking this campaign sort of... Oh, well as a precursor to what I want to do much later on, well, maybe not much later on, but later on, under the gaze of Mao beneath the shadow of the mountains. The Shangxi Mountains shone in the morning light. They stood just below the clouds, each one peaking ever higher until one had to crane his neck to see the tops. They were the stuff of legends, of philosophers of myths, the gods lived in these parts. In a sense, the, commun the communists were gods, not quite humans living in caves and unhidden to every man's eye. They lived and died by the rifle. Each one had renounced material possessions and that capitalist tool in favor of two little books written by Chairman Mao. The Atlantic Lanterns had long run out of fuel and the radios broke. No matter how many died in that raid, they still had their spirits, their comrades, and their books. As long as they lived under the gaze of a mound beneath the shadow of the mountains, they still would have all this, all the essential aspects of life and all too human. And so it happened to become an impossibility to live under the shadow of the mountains and gaze of the chairman. It had begun all one afternoon, a day of rest. See, for the communists, the long march had never ended. It had paused <clears throat> during the war, but then had continued. An endless exodus in a nation so large the plains and mountains and forests went on for days. The enemies were many great, and the distances greater. They'd fallen asleep in the middle of the day, exhausted from each and every truck. One snuck into food stores for a meal and then fell to his knees. It was all gone, save for a few crumbs. Whether it was a beast or a man hardly mattered. The efforts of a year's worth of honest farming and half a year's worth of rigorous stealing was gone. Even this was not enough to destroy the holdouts. They had braved worse. The tragedy that followed boded the true collapse. It was not supposed to come uh, to an end this way. Each one envisioned a bold end, fighting to the death in the land they loved. So when the man went to bed hungry and depressed, with his comrades they were not expecting an attack in the rudest of times. The police were first. Two villagers went out hunting and had, sent, had seen a camp being set up and reported it to the local officers. The officers had reported it higher up, and before anyone knew, an army unit was on it. Bursting in while they slept on straw and dirt, each communist was dead within minutes. Dirtied and sleeping on straw, the dead men did not look much like gods. And this is what became of those who slept under the gaze of Mal and KMT spies found within the government. Oh no. The old KMT were the undisputed hegemonic leaders of China before the Japanese came and conquered. When they installed a new republic and suppressed this nationalist Kuomintang, Chiang Kai-shek's former colleagues went underground. Rumors spread within the bureaucracy of the right KMT infiltrated the government and influencing policy decisions, driving China closer to anarchy. Today, these suspicions were revealed to to be painfully true. A number of government officials, from low-level civil servants to high-ranking of officials, were revealed to be undercover right KMT agents. They were found secret secretly conversing with guerrilla KMT forces operating in Southeast on the subject of directing, redirecting a train of bullion from Nanjing to Yunnan. A police officer spotted the group on a new train yard and went to speak with them, unsure as to why suited figures were in the freight era. After they offered an excuse and badly forged documents, the police officer decided to report the group to his superiors. This prompted the discovery of the cell and the police arrested the group. Currently, they're awaiting a trial. Treason is expected to ash, to dust, and I'm not preparing for any sort of really bad conflict down here at all. Totally not. Totally, totally not. And with you. A farmer in Shandong carries two leaking buckets of water two miles from the nearest well back to his farm, pouring the water into his cattle through, or cattle trough, and turning it around to make a second trip. A woman hurries home through the lightless streets of Nanjing, navigating by memory. As she reaches her apartment, she lights a candle so that she may have some light to see by. These scenes would not have been out of the place in the China of 1750, and yet they happened yesterday. The people of China worked their fields by hand and plow much as they did 300 years ago. Modern forms of communication are non-existent outside the cities. For centuries, China was at the forefront of scientific discovery. Paper making, printing, gunpowder, the list of, of uh, world-changing innovations and inventions is too long to name. If we are to ever return to our former glory... We must reclaim this legacy. The five modernizations will bring China into the modern day, and the modernization of our technology is a vital part of the plan. The long march to technological modernization shall begin. Wow, that's a lot of innovation. Can we see that here now? Or... Mm. This is technolog technological self-sufficiency. Once our self-sufficiency reaches five, we'll no longer need to rely on foreign technological technological assistance. Uh, it reaches 100%. Self-sufficiency is, is zero. Innovation... Okay, improving research facilities greatly. It's currently 15%. Not bad. And educating the country. It's currently zero. We can increase the value of education and modernization progress. Once we hit six, the modernization of education will be complete. Man, that's going to take a long time. And general industry, which I do like as well. Divert stuff towards construction. Okay, not bad. We'll probably do that one. We'll get a lot, of division or a lot less division organization and factory speed, but invest in private businesses. That's not bad. But I think for now, 
Uh, 2%. Uh, Formers faction by 5, 3%. Uh, hmm. Our investments will pay off in the future. Two military factories throughout a country. Well, hmm. Agriculture would not be bad either. Ooh. Well, let's do. We're doing industry for now. Let's import Japanese computer designs. Well, their offices have been filled with the sound scratching of pen against paper for generations. In Japan, the beat of bureaucracy has become the steady clack of computer keyboards. The time has come to change the tune of our work to match, and surely the Japanese wouldn't mind us taking steps to advance our administrative capacity, right? Right. Now, we can do that. Uh, I don't really want to deal with this stuff right now. We can invite these guys over. Oh, industrial expertise does, does go up, though. The improvement of our industrial expertise will ac be accelerated slightly. Oh wait, when removed, our industrial expertise will begin to slowly worsen. So does that mean nothing really improves? If that's the case, maybe I don't want to bribe the old guard. We don't want corruption here though. And we gotta keep some of the liquid reserves, so maybe we can't spend less money. 47, 57, nice. Screw it, I just want to keep, uh, I don't know. I really don't know. Um, We don't have that many liquid reserves, so for this campaign, I guess we're not really going to cut this down then. Because I want to keep spending more money here. I want to invest in our GDP. So, maybe that's the wrong thing to do, but we'll see, I guess. After this, we'll do modern construction equipment, because I want that bonus to construction. Yes, yes, I know we've gr been building things this way since your great-grandfather was a child, but, you know, we would actually like to build a modern factory sometime before the next century. So, hurry up and order those cranes, like you were told. Nice. Uh, I almost clicked that. Ooh, catching the wave of the future. While the current is... Use is somewhat limited, especially in China where electricity is a rare luxury. There's no denying that computers will be instrumental in technological and societal development in the coming decades. Our clerks and accountants spend weeks combing through disorganized and often incomplete records and running numbers to prove reports and answers a computer could generate in a few hours. To avoid falling even further behind the modern world than we already have, we must begin implementing computing technology into the five modernization plans immediately. Luckily, there are several Japanese companies who have offered to sell the computer design pl plans to us in return for a commitment to use the newly built machines to improve agricultural production and manufacturing output, of course. Once we have the designs, there's nothing stopping us from using them for other purposes. We humbly accept this most gracious offer, and we have, it looks like we have quite a few divisions, but not really. Because these are all 17 divisions our four combat with. Kind of suckerinos. Kind of sucks. But that's okay. Um, over here is not bad. Learning to design tech. I like to get the monthly innovation gain. So maybe we'll do this first, and then we're going to come over here, and then we can do some more industrialization. A day in the life, old holdouts. <clears throat> Zen woke up to the sound of gunfire, and yet he was barely stirred. Hung was on the watch today, and Nuo was shooting targets. Breakfast being made, and judged by the gluttonous smell in the air, it was st sticky rice. Stories were running low, or stores were running low, and today was raid day, but that could wait. This was the one day Zen was given the privilege of slipping in. An old radio played some Chinese songs from before the war, and he wished he could go back to sleep to those melodies. But once Zen woke, awoke, he was unable to go back to sleep. There was no point in tossing and turning in his cot. Grabbing a chunk of nearly or nearby finished gluttonous rice, he made sure his rifle magazine was full of bullets and prayed that they would work when the time came. Uh, Hung Yang could only fire so many times before it broke. A little bow to his ancestors for his brothers in arms, he had been given the honor of leading the raid. He didn't deserve it, not after two had died, but he was given it nevertheless. The only map they had after of the village no, could no longer be trusted. It dated back decades. Change in the country took place glacially slow, but not that slow. It would have to do. Like the rifle and the radio and the pots and pans and the commander himself, it would have to do. Even if everything failed, he would still have loyal men and brothers of the KMT to fight for him. What else was important to him? Coffee, a day in the life, beats of the mountain. They watched from the hill. The villagers going about their daily lives. The homes in wood and dirt half collapsing. The cement building in the center had, had a flag that stood still. There was no one today. The big man strolled around, smiling and greeting residents. Smartly dressed with a pin of the flag of the false republic on his breast pocket. Dude. There was something too confident about him. It was the first time he had ever felt anything like it, but Zen had a nagging feeling in his heart. Courage, most likely. To his fellow raiders, he had pointed to the food stores, down the hill to the south. When each had given him an, an affirmative, they yelled some words that had lost meaning to each one a long time ago and charged. He was not surprised why the peasants called them the dudes of the beasts of the mountains. They fit the picture, dirty, clothes tattered, teeth bared. They were beasts, but, but beasts with a righteous cause. Among the crack of guns, Zen could hardly think. He could see villagers going down the f like flies, but he did not meet any resistance. Zen stole a glance at the storehouse and commanded his brothers to take the food and get out. The nagging feeling remained, but now was not the time for it. The villagers were still screaming and there was still work to do, quicker than he thought. His men emerged from the storehouse with panicked looks on their faces. He understood why there was no resistance. The storehouses went up in flames before his men could get out. Out of all the screams, it was only theirs that he could hear. There was no resistance because it was a trap. Zen finally knew that what that nagging feeling was. It was not courage or ferocity, it was fear. Oh boy. 
And well, we can do this one. Move 400 from liquid reserves. We get wireless division organization, which is probably a bad idea. Something is probably going to explode here before too long, but hmm. It's only 50 PP, so eh, we'll try that one. Why not? So instead of three, we got eight right now. And that'll be done in October, so not too bad. Killing two birds with one stone. Well, let's go and do this one first. Invite Japanese technicians. It's an open secret that our benevolent overlord has done their best to ensure that our technological progress lags behind, well behind theirs. However, there are many young Japanese engineers and technicians who are frustrated with their current and future prospects. With a little persuasion, perhaps they could come to work for us instead. Killing two birds with one stone. While the introduction of computer technology in China has greatly accelerated our path to modernization, it has also exposed some oversights in the plan. Computers are difficult to build and maintain, and this problem is only worsened by a lack of modern construction equipment available to China. By acquiring all machinery and tools used in modern construction sites, we will be able to build dedicated facilities for new computers fully capable of housing and running them. As an added bonus, this new equipment can then be used to put uh, to use building countless new industrial sites, factories, mines, roads, and other projects that will be vital to the progress of the Chinese nation. Contracts have already been drawn up with multiple suppliers in Japan to sell the equipment at a reduced cost in return for exclusive production rights at the newly built facilities. While this may limit our profits in the short term, it will be worth it to receive state-of-the-art construction machines at such a low cost. Let's get to work and another morning walk. Gao rested his head into his hands. He couldn't look at any more paperwork. It was just too much. He looked out longingly through the window. Gray clouds began to circulate over the busy city. Taking in a deep breath, he pushed his chair back and stood up. Maybe a walk would clear his mind. Leaving the office, he slipped in on into his coat. Behind him, a soft voice came out. Mr. President, are you going for going to be long? Gao turned around, visibly startled. No, 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 I'll be right back. Just have to have to... The Chinese president cleared his throat. I just have to clear my head. Around him, umbrellas began to pop open as the first raindrops began to fall. One umbrella, two, ten, fifty, more and more umbrellas sprung up around him. It froze the Chinese president in his tracks. So many people in this one city just won. All of them under his protection are lying on him. Gao Zongwu alone to fix his broken country. Shaking his head, he soldiered on. He knew where he had to go. When the rising sun cast its rays into divided China, it so much was lost. Centuries of old artifacts simply reduced to rubble. The memorial of Dr. Sun Yat-sen stood tall and proud amongst the bustling crowd. The Japanese were not so foolish as to destroy this monument, even if it was a relic of an old regime. Jing's KMT was many things, pondered Zongwu, but at least they were free. Perhaps we too shall be free someday. And import designs. Of course, everyone loves the feeling of a new ingenious design produced by Chinese minds and prototyped with Chinese hands, but in this age... Genius has often been replaced with madness. So why should we stand around hoping for the next great idea when we can borrow some from abroad? Because I definitely want to get that bonus to industry because we're actually lacking in the industry quite a bit. And then we'll get learning to design. And then we're going to come over here so we can do this quite a bit more. Oh, we get more political power. Oh, Ooh, we can rush on that way. But I want to get this one first because right now we're trying to finish. Ooh, that was bad. Oh, I also said I would look at the national spirit. So we have Japan's breakfast. Not good. We also have probably slave to the Japanese. Slave of the Slamurai. Slamurai? <laughs> Samurai. Very bad for us. Small army. So, we get less division, attack and defense, army XP, gain, division, organization, critical population, cannot train, dis disable, or edit units without permission from our Japanese overlord. And for designs. And then we also have the Defang Tiger, which is very bad as well, as well as state of education, decrypt. <clears throat> oh, that's so bad. Yeah, we're going to focus on education quite a bit, but then legislative one, faction effects, nothing. Chinese education status, really bad, and improved research capabilities, but learning from the best. We did not expect the road to modernization to be easy, but the initial report was even worse than we thought. Less than 0.5% of our population possesses the skills we need to begin modernizing. Large portions of our population are not only technically illiterate, but completely illiterate. <clears throat> If we're to become a powerhouse of innovation, we must educate a generation of experts in fields ranging from modern irrigation practices to electrical grid management. As frustrating as it is to admit, we must acknowledge that Japan produces some of the finest technology in the world and by extension, some of the finest technicians. Several prominent Japanese technicians have expressed interest in the five modernizations program. We should invite them to advise their technological development and teach at our technical schools. After all, who is better fit to educate the first generation of Chinese technological professionals than the people they will one day replace? Send the invitations. I want to get more civvies. I really do, but I'm not sure if that's really the best course of action. Bribe them? No, I don't want to do that one. Nope. Uh, Japanese companies. Uh, what are we doing here down here? Oh, that's not good. Literacy is getting worse. Research facilities, agriculture, poverty is getting even worse. Oh, God. Um, expertise is getting worse. Army professionals is getting quite a bit worse. Oh, God. And the graffiti trials. 
The streets of Shanghai are dirty and undesirable. Beggars line every corner and cower under every sunroof. One recent menace terrorizing the streets have been teenage hooligans, spreading liberal and socialist laws whenever the opportunity arises. A week ago, anti-imperialist graffiti and obscene drawings were found sprinkled along the bottom of the Ch Chinese Mitsubishi offices. As soon as these crude illustrations were found, authorities began to investigate. After raiding numerous homes in the slums, the police charged into a woman's home. The elderly woman fried and began to beat men with sandals. While the officers endured the slight discomfort for a couple of minutes, they eventually knocked the woman out and found sacks of empty spray cans down the stairs underneath the ground floor. Also down in the basement was a teenager cowering in the corner, shaking. After being shot with rubber bullets, the teenager was dragged out and forced to confess his crimes of disturbing the peace. The liberal skank, the brat that he was, ratted out his accomplices, who were promptly arrested. A military tribune found them guilty and sentenced them to death for treason. The teenagers who had been rotting in a cell for days were finally brought to the gallows. One fainted, his knees buckling before stepping up to the rope. The soldiers present shot him in the head. The rest of it had the noose put around their necks. As the stools were pulled beneath them, most called for the families or let a shop a short prayer. One of them, short and rat face, had the nerve to make his last words bad word the emperor. Finally, as the stool was pulled underneath the final perpetrator, he screamed in a final moment of defiance, Long live Chiang Chine, before choking on his tongue. We will never know his final words. Oh boy, gotta love the Japanese in this timeline. And what's going on here? Ooh, nothing there. Not too much. And... Alright, cool. What's all this? Domestic consumption. Ooh, GDP growth will go up, but that does hurt us a little bit more. Um, oh, we could do that. Expertise. It's not... Mm, GDP will increase. That's not really worth it. I mean, yeah, improvement of our industrial ex expertise will be slightly accelerated, but... You get more construction speed, more output, you get more GDP, but, eh, I don't know. I think it's just better to use maybe something like this, or instead, cost us a little bit more money, and keep making more of these. 10 is not bad. That's getting slightly, slightly better. I could be wrong about this, though, but whatever. Learning to design trade, or design tech. While we are proficient at producing equipment in line with blueprints, the next stage is to produce the blueprints themselves, full standardization, formatting, and designing. Or designation will allow for easily accessible and re reproducible schematics to be created and utilized anywhere in China, which would be good. So get that one done. Um, that's not bad. National dollar increase. It doesn't really matter. Ooh, that one's really good to get to. Ooh, you know what? I think we'll go down here. Get to here. Get to here. Uh, because we need better agricultural methods. But I do want to get to culture studies for more political power as well. Urgh. Plans for the future. While we have made great strides in our journey to make China technologically self-sufficient, it is definitely not enough that we have with the, with that we have the personnel to with the knowledge and exper experience to pull China into the modern age. We must also have the plans to build the technology we need. From cars to radios to hydroelectric dams, there are countless designs we must have if we ever want to escape the Dark Ages. The Japanese technicians we have hired have brought some of the, these blueprints with them. But the other designs will have to be acquired from Japanese companies. Our contacts in Japan will have managed to exploit the economic crisis playing the various corporations and conglomerates off each other. By pledging support to both the Zaibatsus and Karatsus in return for various import important designs, we've been able to procure all the plans we need. Of course, when the time comes to return the favor, our agents will long be gone and the Japanese will have bigger problems to deal with than some Chinese and industrial espionage. We're playing both sides. That way, we always come out on top. What was this one? Bribe the old guard? No, I don't want to see that one. I don't want to see that one. No, 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 no. Um, no. The Coca-Cola incident. Not too bad. For decades now, <clears throat> there have been a national reawakening in America, a shift in American interest not in a god culture ideology, but with something more simple. The Americans have become infatuated with a brown carbonated drink called Coca-Cola. According to anonymous reports, this Coke is supposedly sweet and dangerously addictive. While Americans have claimed that this addictive factor is not due to the possibility of a cocaine in the drink, we cannot trust them. Dealing in Coca-Cola for or any other dangerous illicit drugs is severely punished for even taking a sip could get an innocent child of China addicted. It was on the 9th of August that this aforementioned liquid was found in an old country warehouse, about 50 kilometers from Chongqing. A warehouse raid prompted by informants within the triads uncovered boxes upon boxes full of Coca-Cola, opium, marijuana, and every other western decadent drug under the sun. While the drugs were safely disposed of, more importantly, the Coca-Cola was incinerated. As an unfortunate side effect, paranoia is at an all-time high. Dangerous rumors within the police department have begun to spread. Apparently, one of the members of the raid decided to take a few of the bottles home to his family. We will not allow American products on our soil. And new agricultural equipment. As we turn towards industrialization, more and more ag more and more workers will move from the fields to the factories. In order to prevent an agricultural crisis, we must replace the hoe and plow with a tractor and combine. This will provide the perfect opportunity to test our industrial capacity as well as our ability to secure and adapt foreign equipment. We've got a long ways to go for towards industrialization. Oh boy. So I'm doing this to hurt your PP, but this will get more construction speed and output and uh, consumer goods factories, which is probably the most important thing to me. That's nice and all, but 
And there go the Americans. Hey, 12 out of 20, nice. Instead of October, now it's September, which is very good. We could keep going, the Coke's culprits. A troubling report arrived on the desk of Gao Wangzu. Uh, Ozongwu, the chief of the police in Chongqing, has betrayed the nation. The, de uh, the report details how, while lounging in the office, the officer began to blab or blabber about the American products that were vastly superior, raising some eyebrows in the room. He continued on, saying that the Japanese drinks had nothing on the cool, refreshing side taste of Coca-Cola. A loyal officer informed his boss that he was committing treason by harboring such goods. The chief disregarded the advice and offered to buy the silence of those in the room with carbonated beverages. The report questions why anyone would ever brag about this terrible act, but Justice is swift, and the officer was quickly brought before a tribunal. The once loyal officer had obviously been corrupted by Coke, but at least he quickly spilled all the information he knew about his suppliers. It seemed that the culprits were all, all finally to be ready to be caught. Another police raid, not too dissimilar from the one the previous week, had been ordered upon the suppliers. Finally, Coca-Cola may no longer plague the hearts of the Chongqing with darkness. We can't even trust the police to keep away from the Coke. And Coke is okay. Your inefficiency... Well, actually, look at that. Our current innovation is 62%. That's not bad. The Great Reversal begins. But we gotta go down this way. New agricultural methods, because I want to get that bonus, and then we'll come over there. Actually, this one is... Uh, Agricultural methods will gain progress towards the next improvement. Nice. The Great Reversal begins. With the purchase of modern construction equipment, China's industry has found itself in an interesting position. While we all have the required tools and materials to begin manufacturing advanced products on a large scale, the only plans we have are those we have acquired from the Japanese, and our technicians are only trained to operate Japanese machines and produce Japanese goods. Well, we may be able to manufacture Japanese tech products just as well as they can themselves. We will not be fully technologically independent until we can make it our own Chinese tech that surpasses theirs. We have taken steps to ensure this has become uh, real. And secret laboratories around China, our best designers have reverse engineered Japanese technology, discovering what works, what doesn't, and how it can be improved. Already the first plans are being drafted, and the factories are being prepared soon. It should be Chinese technology flooding Japanese markets, not the other way around. We're no longer their student, we will become their master, which sounds like what the Chinese do best, and copy, copy, copy. Um, screw it. I, I want to get this stuff done as fast as possible. At least get full 20 out of 20. So after this, we'll do new farming techniques. Now that we've acquired modern agricultural equipment, we must improve the manner in which we can use them. Efficient field placement, soil, fertility, conservation, and multi-stage processing facilities are all techniques that could amplify our agricultural output as much as the machines themselves. Cool. Boost, boost, boost. We gotta get as much of that as possible. Um, yeah, I just say we wouldn't do this, but we could do this once, maybe. Half a billion. Hmm. Yeah, we'll do it once. Why not? So that's, that's really good for 70%. But, uh, yeah. Choose a small research bonus in the production, construction, electronics category. Clamp down on corruption. Yeah. Encourage domestic consumption. I kind of want to do that one, but that doesn't really look like it's going to help us out. A farmer's life is a simple life. Our new computers have helped us identify multiple problems within our agricultural production. While there are countless small issues happening our farmers, they are all connected by one common cause, despite the fact that it makes up the largest sector of our economy. Chinese agriculture has not significantly progressed in centuries. While farmers in other nations use tractors, chemical fertilizers, and water pipelines, our farmers still rely on horse-drawn plows, manure, and primitive irrigation systems. If China is to retain its position as a sphere's primary food supplier, it is of the utmost importance that we begin to industrialize our agriculture immediately. The cost of purchasing modern agricultural equipment from Japan and reselling it to farmers at affordable rates will be steep, but our financial experts are confident that the increase in crop and livestock yields will be more than make up for within the next 10 years. First, we sow the seeds and get some new farming equipment. And now, we'll go over reorganizing the curriculum. The subjects that have been taught as of now are not all applicable to the innovations and conditions that the modern world has brought upon us. We'll begin a mass reform of the curriculum to adjust to these changes and reflect the grand efforts of modernizing China will undergo for the good of the sphere. The Civil Rights Act has been passed in America. Cool. Yeah, that's still going on. Has Burgundy finally done it? Maybe, 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 maybe. So because of this, increase self technological self-sufficiency. So what does this do? Increase our technological self-sufficiency every time when our innovation reaches 100%. We need some liquid reserves. Um, oh, national debt does not exceed gross GDP. Oh, that is, ooh, that's not good. Death of Ouyang Yuquan. Uh, the dude, famed Peking, 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 up, or... Oh, 
Opera actor and director passed away today in an Nanjing hospital following a week long bout of sickness. Despite his fame, the funeral will still be held in the countryside and will be closed to the public. Although his early films expressed distasteful anti Japanese sentiment, he eventually put his artistic talents to good use producing patriotic movies in order to promote pan Asiatic goodwill and reconciliation. Any pro Chinese citizen is familiar with his work. His modern film adaptation of his own play, Pan Jinlian, is especially popular with among women. Regardless of his politics, he was an innovative theatrical genius and made great contributions to film and drama theory. The people, the government, and the surprisingly well-connected association of film enthusiasts is all morning's passing. Rest in peace. So maybe we should have done this one first, because we don't have... We have way more, de way too much debt compared to the GDP. Levantine Kingdom. Oh, look at that. Will Arabs and Jews ever get along? Definitely not. Oh, huh. cool. A rough adjustment. Uh, we do technically need to keep cutting it down, but uh, keep going, I guess, for now. Screw it. A rough adjustment. Well, the first shipment of new farm equipment from Japan was qu quickly brought, bought out by the farmers and ranchers across our nation. We had reason to believe that the modernization of our agricultural sector would be an easy process and could be mostly left to the farmers to handle themselves. When a study conducted by our farmers, or by our agriculture department, reached the desk of the General Secretary of Industry and Agriculture, these hopes were quickly vanished. In Henan, pipes designed to water crops are being used as fence posts and improved improvised water weather vanes. In Fujian, farmers had traded their tractor to cattle ranchers that used the machines to herd their stock. One particularly inventive individual has been burning bags of fertilizer to heat his stables and if there's any left over, his bath water. Such waste and misuse of expansive machines must be brought to an end as soon as possible. Orders have been issued to begin re-education campaign across rural China to help our agricultural workers properly implement their new equipment into their daily work. We have also made sure that all future products will be sold with the detailed instructions manuals included. No transition is ever perfectly smooth. Reorganizing curriculum. Nice. Um, yeah, I think we did another one, yeah. I think we did another one, so whatever. Cultural studies. We will add to the curriculum a sector on the studies of various cultures throughout the world and th the values, structures of the household, and progress of the country in order to probe and determine the, from the teachers and students how we can improve their nation using these lessons. Distribute technologies. Ooh, that's not bad either. That's really good. Um, improve our poverty rate. Oh, oh, let's go. Oh, I want to do that one too. Eh. We can be more than just Japan's breadbasket. Japan's breadbasket national spirit will be significantly reduced. That's not bad to do. Where's the uh, breadbasket one? Oh, look at that. Civilian budget boost, of course, but... And eh, decrypt is pretty bad. Breadbasket? That would be good to get rid of, but... Mm. Invite the companies... Da, da, da. I think... Oh, how about down here? Nah. Yeah, like I said, this one's all okay. I just want to make sure we have an incredibly strong GDP. Yeah, we don't need bigger GDP. Oh, and we're already maxed out, maybe? Oh, we must be already maxed out here then. Oh, that's not too bad though. Reorganizing curriculum. We are in the process of updating the subjects out of schools to reflect the realities of the modern world. New methods are, of teaching, decades old in, development na in developed nations, have been implemented. Lessons once nothing but antiquated parables and musings have been standardized. Children who once wasted time socializing and playing games on the street now spend their carefully partitioned days lugging textbooks and between classrooms organized into rows of desks full of anxiety over assignments and exams, classes in session, and you better whip them. Wait, what? No, oh, don't whip them. No, uh, don't mind me. <laughs> And we just got done strategic theorem. Is there anything that we can do quickly? 30 to 15 days. God dang. But we're already doing that. Um, 121 days. Let's do that one. Land doctrine. At least we got one thing of land doctrine done. And I chose strategic theorem just because it probably was the best. A Russian rose. Dealing telling the adventure of a young Chinese officer who serves in the German Wehrmacht in the Second World War and is returned to China by way of Russia. This book has burst onto the scene uh, and become quite popular among the urban populace. Though it is largely based of, on factual events, the book is first and foremost an adventure novel, told through the guise of a diary of the unmain, unnamed main character. Each snippet of this adventure is, it, that is written begs more questions than it answers, driving the reader onwards evermore in search of answers and longing to get a full view of this hero's deeds. The author goes by the name Ni Man, an unknown in any literary circle, which only feels intrigue around the book as well as sales. So I'm glad we got this one because we're going to need some more entrenchment. So, at least they're gossiping about something interesting for once. Cool. Keep going down that debt for now, then. Screw it. The last debt. 
premiere of the life of uh, Wang on Xi. Nanjing has become a bubbling, bubbling cauldron of excitement as government officials and film stars flock to the capital. On the schedule was the premiere of the film The Life of Wang on Xi at the Capitol Theater with all the pomp of an American Hollywood event. The film, which went from script to screen in under a year, deals with the life and reforms of Wang on Xi, a major figure of reform during the Song Dynasty. It stars iconic actor Jin Yan as a former minister in his last days, reflecting on his life and how his reforms were all brought down by those who sought to fuel their own power. Though the work is incredibly moving, it uses a wide brush to paint a new political reality for the public. China is beginning the first steps towards reform. The message, carefully crafted by the Ministry of Culture, seeks to depict those who seek to stifle progress and reform as the basis form of creature, while lionizing figures like An Shi. In particular, the film went on to great lengths to show Empress Gao as close to a demon as possible, using a great deal of makeup to craft a distorted visage that embodies corruption. The film closes with a painful pawn along the Yangtze as Yang writes a piece of Anshi's poetry. Green in the spring winds, the south bank of the Yangtze. When will the bright moon light my, light my journey home? With Shanghai just visible in the distance as the sun begins to rise. When's the next showing? Cool. Yeah, increase education. We're not there yet. Um, let's see. Two days left. Oh, increase innovation. That's 8%. Nice. And we're already 100%. Maybe we should have cooled off on that at least a little bit. Yeah, maybe we should have done that one. And we don't look at this. My bad. <laughs> a culture studies. A new subject has been added to the national Chinese curriculum. But to the confusion and even anger of many instructors and students, it does not concern China at all. For the first time, the youth are encouraged to examine and understand foreign cultures besides the Japanese. Alien literature, film, and music is studied in classrooms across the country, giving our people greater appreciation for the other. What is a cowboy? Yeah, we've got to do... Uh, oh, oh, I want to do that one, but we already maxed out on innovation. I should have waited for that one, but whatever. Teach history. More war sports, stability, teach math. Ooh, let's do nationalism and learning. Let's do that one, yeah. Technical subjects. The world is racing past us. Our outdated methods of production hinder us, shackling us down from achieving our modernizations. We cannot only achieve the internal international standard of production, but set a new bottom line for other countries to meet. This is only achievable if the next generation of workers is educated on how to create using cutting-edge technology. We will start young by adding courses on machining to the curriculum immediately. And after that, we will do nationalism and learning, because I don't want that extra PP gain. So, the history of our country has lasted 3,000 years. All for about 300 of those years, we were the very center of attention, if not the very center of the earth. What reason could, would there be to not be proud of our history? None, absolutely none. Therefore, we will begin reforming the curriculum to begin instilling a sense of national pride and elan within the youth, so they may see the dream we hold and perhaps make them more pliable towards our reforms for the betterment of the Chinese nation. Hey, we made a factory. Look at that, 15 out of 20. And we do have a lot of liquid reserves, which kind of sucks, but whatever. I want to do this one, but... So, okay, so we can do this one, but even if the GDP is bigger, so we need at least 250 million, so... It's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Keep building, though. Build, build, build. Faster, 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 faster. But happy 63, everyone. Hope you're having a great year. Japanese intellectuals. Um, after this, I think we might go ahead and do some more of this stuff over here, too, just because getting the monthly innovation is good, because this is 100% already. That's actually really good. Um, education efficiency is not very good yet, so at, at zero. So technical subjects. We started out our reforms with the teaching of subjects related to technology and industrialization. By teaching the operation of machinery, creative solutions to technical issues, and how to properly conduct repairs, our pathos will become world-class workers. The factories she sure seem to be a lot more advanced these days. I don't mind doing this, but now eh, let's wait. Um, what is this one? Increase research shipments to Japan. Oh, we get actually... Oh, that's not terrible. More consumer goods could be really good for us to use, but I want to save our PP for now. Hey, we actually have one army XP. Look at that. Are we losing army XP every day? No, we just have a small army, that's all. Oh, increase. Increase it, yes. Advances in technology. Our efforts have borne fruit. The recent innovations created by our talented scientists have greatly accelerated our technological progress. As such, we now have access to indispensable scientific knowledge that we are ready to apply towards the field of research. Construction, production, computer technology. Ooh, actually, I forgot about that. I should have done that one earlier. I completely forgot about... Actually, we're not that far behind. Um, industry would probably be really good, because we'll hit 65 soon enough. Computing, let's do construction or industry. Ah! Let's do industry. There you go. Cool, not bad. And this goes up by eight a month. Factional updates, doesn't really matter too much. Oh, do we end up in corruption? Old guard in the cabinet. Eh, what, what, the 50, 50, 50. Increase performances are maybe. Increase in modernization for education is 8% and? Did we hit it? No, wait, is it bugged or something? 
Why is it not 8%? Current monthly modernization is 8%, but the current education... Oh, is that bugged? Oh. Nation nationalism and learning. China has existed as a nation for 3,000 years. For 2,700 of these, these years, we were the center of the earth. Our culture, science, and technology were so far ahead of the rest of the world that all others threw themselves down at our heavenly feet for a mere taste of our divine luxury afforded by none other than ourselves. But for 300 of them, we lurked in the shadows subservient to those in Europe or now to Japan. What reason could there be possibly to not be proud of the prosperity rather than submission? None, absolutely not. Therefore, we will now dedicate ourselves to reform the curriculum in all subjects, but most importantly, history, to instill a sense of national pride and great elan within the impressionable youth, so they may see the dream we hold and make them more pliable towards the reforms of the betterment of all nations in China, or of China. The mandate of heaven rests in all of us. Um, let's go and do this one. I want to definitely get agriculture itself. In order to promote continued sustainable growth of industrial output, we must improve our capacity to distribute raw materials and completed products. With computerized data processing and modern radio and telephone infrastructure, we can remotely observe and manipulate our supply chains to match our current needs. Not bad. I think that, one, that one's really good to get. I think we're just going to continue with that one because that costs, what, 20, 15 political power? There's a factory output and division organization, but I don't really care unless we're at war. If we're at war, then that's just really bad for us. But whatever. Hmm. Pursue inner cooperation sphere, huh? Eh, focus on cooperation, support old guard interests. Annual expenditure for 1% of your growth. It reduces our growth by 0.5%. What the heck? Um, I don't know about that. Nice, that one's done. Really good. There goes Madagascar. Modernization awareness campaign. Eh. Remove 400 million in additional expenses. That's not bad. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Keep some of the liquid reserves that we currently have. Let's go and do this one. It takes, it'll take a long time, but fine, whatever. Collapse of Jupiter Madagascar. Cool. Oh, we need this one. We need, we need more liquid reserves, so now we're not building as fast. Which really sucks. But the unification of China. China is a massive country. <clears throat> this is no secret to anyone who owns a map and several people in the Office of Transportation and Logistics do. While the great distances between our urban centers have always been an obstacle to those ruling China, the recent advances our nation has made may finally present a solution. Radio towers have grown from our land like the spines of some agitated beast. Telephone lines or wires crisscross the country, forming a massive web of communication. Highways and rail lines span the gaps between our cities, bridges, and across the vast rural sea that separates them. Little by little, day by day, China is becoming more connected. As its connection increases, so does their reaction speed. Regional food shortages rarely develop into famines, and unsupplied businesses now receive their new stock in a timely fashion. It may not be as flashy as a new computer or a shipment of bulldozers, but the advancement of distribution technology has been vital to our path to the future. We may not be the finish line, but we are now within sight. Good, good, good. I'll do this one too, just because I want to reduce the effect of this stuff. With our recent advancements in equipment and logistics, we now produce enough food crops to feed Japan twice over. We will shift a sizable portion of our transport facility to facilitate the mass exportation of agricultural products to cement our place as an integral part of the sphere, granting us the bargaining power we so desperately need. And after that, I think we haven't done anything on the right side at all. I want to do this one of these, though. Hmm. Stability is really good to get. That's not bad. Poverty will get better. Japanese teachers. Um... Hmm. Less political power. I don't like that. Mm, we'll see. What else do we have here? Military factories. That's 65. Well, that's not doing too bad for us actually here at all. So I guess we can go with that one. It's only 90 days. So that's, that's actually pretty good. We've got some private businesses. We need what? We need more money in our thing. So um, that's not terrible. In Ooh, increase GDP growth by 0.3 percent. Maybe get a civvy factory. Eh, I'd rather just build right now. I'd really just rather build. It hurts us a little bit, but April 21st would be nice. So after this one, let's go ahead and do invite Japanese intellectuals 1% more every month. Yeah, let's do that one. Let's get some more going for now. Our ancestors' mistake was not letting go of their ancient pride and not recognizing that our methods have fallen behind the Western ones. Japan has realized it, and now they rule over us. We must collaborate with their intellectuals to better understand how they manage to catch up so rapidly and perhaps learn a few lessons from their experiences. The first conference of the CAWA comes to an end. China may be moving towards industrialization, but we will always be an agricultural nation at heart. Our, as our factories modernize, so too will our farms, ranches, and orchids. 
These words from the president of the Chinese Agricultural Workers Alliance was met with thunderous applause today. As their first annual conference comes to an end, farmers from all across China hope to return their everyday lives. The shared feeling among them is one of hope and ambition. In only a few years, they have seen record-breaking crop yields and a dramatic increase in quality, all thanks to the influx of new farming equipment and methods that most of them had once considered beyond unattainable. As food prices fall, more and more shipments are being sent to Japan and the rest of that sphere, increasing their reliance on us even more. The period of a confusion has come to an end, and China's push towards agricultural modernity has finally truly begun. Then we reap the rewards. Now, how does that affect this? Oh, do we get rid of it? We might have gotten rid of it, or maybe it's over here now, actually. Um, no. We're Japan's breadbasket now. So that gave us a few more goods to work with. Not bad. Opportunity at the port of Dailan. The ships arrived along the shore, carrying with them the, our hopes and dreams of a renewed China. Today, teachers, by the hundreds or thousands, arrived intent on teaching potential laborers for their sphere of co-prosperity, or whatever idealistic truthisms we smooched, smooched out those Japanese diplomats with. Little do, do any of them know what potential these men will be to our greater plan, and little do those distant slave masters know of our final goal. A step for the state, a leap for a nation. Not bad. In which right now, we've just finished up that one. Educational progress is going up. That might be good to do as well. New equipment excavation. Um, this stuff, the this stuff immediately you get is okay. Consumer goods factories does go down, which is really nice. I do like that one quite a bit. Uh, card, a significant cost to maintain, a cost that we can reduce with the profits we gain from mining and selling resources. Gold mines, excavation bonuses. Um, that's not bad either. Energy for the sphere. Consider rubber and oil to Japan, and this will be recompensated financially somewhat. Get more money. Poverty gets becomes better. I think we'll choose the right side here because I want to do the arsenal of the sphere. Growing military industry. No matter what Japan says or thinks about our desire to get a bigger army, we have to develop a military industry of our own. We can just convince them that with the promise of arming them as well, but we know what our true purposes are. And having a good time. Military austerity? Nope, we need some more money, so there you go. We could get that down. And I don't really want to try this because right now we are making 18 out of 20. So we do this, we're going to hurt ourselves a little bit. But we do get a civilian factory in three months. So we'll try it. So if we go back to here, it was 18. Now it's 15. That kind of hurts me internally. But if we get another factory out of it, maybe it's not too bad. I, this has got to be glitched, right? Oh, no, no, oh, no. This one's education efficiency. This one is education modernization. Okay. I, I wonder if it was a bug or something like that. So I just need to read. Huh. <laughs> This is looking not too bad. 47% is pretty darn good. <clears throat> and we have, we have quite a bit of PP. I don't want to support the all-guard interest. Not really. That hurts our GDP. Yeah, hurts our GDP growth. It's really, really bad. So, encourage domestic consumption. I, oh, I don't want to spend PP for this. But increases our GDP growth, which is not bad. Uh, that hurts the consumer goods those factories. Oh, I don't want to do that one. This one's not great either, like I said before. But it does give us better consumer goods. I'll do it once. Why not? As a negative opinion, we lose factory output, construction speed. They, oh, we got. Oh, that's so bad. Oh, that's so bad. But we actually went back and mitigated it. So back at 18. So doing political stuff is very political. Oh, Arsenal of the Sphere. China's arms industry is no longer the pitiful rump it was once. Now, every man in the sphere has something from China, whether it be a rifle, boot, or helmet. The Wuhan arsenal, the pride of China for hundreds of years, has been revived to its former glory. And the citizenry of Wuhan lies restless at night, kept awake by the noise of guns and fortunes made. Seeds of the complex, the Chinese military is quite the grotesque beast, as it always has been during the war. Chinese troops sported whatever they could, or whatever their superiors could, scrounge up. It was not unusual to see a KMT soldier fighting tooth and nail with a German helmet, French boots, and a Turkish uniform, and an American rifle. Now, all troops use equipment of one nation, and one nation only, Japan. However, Japan would be much rather keep their own military in shape than find one that serves little practical purpose but to attack guerrillas. Our supplies inconsistent at best and non-existent at worst. If our military is to ever strengthen itself, we must make and make true take true control of our soldiers and clothes on their back. The China built by Gal will not fight with the Japanese, American, or German equipment. It will fight with China. We will hold ourselves high. And we actually have more military factories, which is nice. We're going to need a lot of goods here. So let's go up to two and then do two up there. And then, um, eh, actually keep it one and then go two and then there you go. Not bad. So after this, Kai is elected, elected president, minister. I want to improve uh, this stuff. Baby steps. An uncomfortable crash rings out within the Hanyang arsenal. The recent imported American tooling machines are quite uh, <clears throat> useful, skillfully tripping our skill to the shame of battle rifle receivers. With the great quality comes great price, however, and we are unable to purchase more than five of the machines, so we have to resort to reverse engineering. It would seem that our engineers have missed a few steps in reconstructing the machines, though, at, as at present, our Chinese machines have consistently vibrated themselves to bits. In our attempts at cutting costs, we have, in a way, temporarily neutered our arms industry. Take a loan and call that American man again. 
and managing the factories, or manning the factories once we get this one done as well, which will be good. Let's get some more resources construction, and construction is almost done. It's 63, so we're actually doing really well on this stuff. All this stuff is going well. This stuff is coming along nicely. We could probably do a land auction, but let's improve our... Actually, our rivals aren't too bad either. Not too shabby. Better artillery, though, so we don't produce garbage stuff. And manning the factories. Our factories are developing excellently, excellently and seem poised for expansion. The sole problem is we need a workforce for them as well. No problem given our large population, however. So we get more output, which is nice. With the rapid industrialization of our economy, the poverty rate of our people will be reduced over time, which is good. Get a GDP boost and more poverty rate improvements. So that would be really nice. The poverty rate of people will be reduced over time. That's not bad. Computer system will become harder. Oh. Poverty rate will become even better as well. Manning the factories will be... Oh, the effects of this one will be increased. Ooh. Manning the factories. We can do this one and this one. So, oh, but it requires this one. Oh, that sucks. Um, let's do what? We're going to do manning the factories next. <clears throat> oh, I do want to do exploitable population after this one as well. Hmm. Whole greater than cabinet interest. Arms of the sphere. China has been named the breadbasket of the sphere. <clears throat> by contemptuous imperialists insistent on ref referencing our subservience to the Japanese. While con condescending, this remark highlights the fact that J J Chinese rice and millet feeds the armies of the sphere, a stance that offers their nation a sort of shadowy control over the sphere. As <clears throat> our chief economic advisor has recommended that perhaps China could also feed the sphere's armies rifles as well as dinner through industrial expansion. There's much to be done, but imagine a future where every soldier holds Chinese breakfast in one hand and a rifle in the other. They know nothing of control. Cool. Nothing here yet. Nothing there. Nothing there. Okay. Keep our PP because we're going to need it. Definitely going to need it. And keep our uh, liquid reserves. Hey, 3.3%. Not bad. That's actually really good. Miss, dear brother, as you know, I'm currently proudly serving my country and securing her borders from foreign barbarians. It's quite easy when you possess the stronger weapons, though I used to fire a Japanese rifle at work, and, and for that I was grateful. But recently we've been resupplied with so-called Chinese rifles that I cannot even call moderately successful. They jam, backfire, wide, and they snap. I want to see your nation grow strong by strong again, but how do we do that with crap like this? What do they wish for me to do beyond hitting my enemy with this rifle like a club? Love redacted. This is why we censor. It's not bad. I want to get rid of that exploit in the population debuff, so... Exploitable population. No matter how many men we recruit for the workforce, it seems our factories keep demanding more. And we will provide. We got plenty of women and maybe some children who could use exercise and patriotic duty. And I want to keep doing, going down this way, but let's do this one first. Wrapping up military production is okay. I don't really care about it too much. Um, but after this, I, do, I want to focus a lot more on education. I really, really want to love education because this stuff is all okay. Um, there's not really anything here too much that I say we have to do immediately. So after this, we'll do this stuff. So Actually, that's not bad to do. Chinese scholarship is not bad. Uh, yeah, not too bad. Oh, we do get more PP down here. So after this one, we'll go down here. And by doing that, we'll teach art. And then we'll teach history as well, which will be, probably be a good thing to do. Is there anything else we can do here? Uh, invest in private. Ooh, well. What does that one do? Um, when selected... You get more GDP growth. When removed, you might get another city. So, actually, by doing that one, you keep the GDP growth. That's actually not bad. Let's do that one. Screw that. Yeah. There you go. We might get another city out of it. We'll see what happens. Manning the factories up. Wuhan Arsenal slowly becoming China's China's premier production set for military hardware. <clears throat> uh, let's see. The northern campus, in particular, was aiming at decreasing production figures by 400% by the end of last year, but we fell short. A solution to this has been proposed. Entice the unemployed to work in the factories. It isn't easy or particularly enjoyable work, but... If we can sponsor the unemployed from all across China, perhaps we can fill our factories to capacity. Drop, drops to fill the buckets. Nice. So after that, improve factory efficiency. That's not bad, but we can probably wait for that. I like the bonus to industry, though. And after that, we're going to go and teach art. So we can get down here and get more PP. Slavery by another name. The following was recovered amongst Mr. Lee's possessions. A length of grass rope, a locket containing a photograph, and a note. The note reads as follows. Today I saw my daughter. She was very ill. I couldn't get off work. I worked so much. After I begged, they let up and let me see her procession. Whew. Mr. Lee was found hanging from the overhead water piping. Clear all his possessions and make room for the next in heaven and do tonight. Horrible. Oh boy. Teach art. Yes, because I want to get more PP every day. Because even though PP doesn't really matter too much, we probably do... Eh. I want more PP, but educational progress will be increased as well. Hmm. Research speed does go up. 
and I'll do this one before GB costs too much, Japanese teachers. We cannot educate our population without teachers, and for the moment, we have a shortage. As much as it may hurt, we must call upon our Japanese overlords once more, and ask to borrow some of their teachers to help educate our burgeoning population. Nice. So, can we increase anything else here yet? Probably not. Camarovo, Iberian Council, not bad, not bad. So, where are we at for this? 100%. Oh, we need to do this one. So we just need more liquid reserves, and then we can do this. Cool. Awesome. Awesome, 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 awesome. How's this coming along? 79%? Not bad, not bad. And there goes part of Madagascar. Cool. Getting more out of it. Nice. Now let's keep going with this one. Literacy programs. Oh, no, no. We wanted the Japanese teacher one first. There you go. It isn't enough. We need to get even more out of our workers. We just aren't getting enough. Sure, we can sustain our military's production as needs as needed, but if we wish to expand a facility to a proper Chinese army, we need much more in supply. For this reason, we need to get even more out of our population, not just the workers, who will do the patriotic work, but the consumers will. Our government has refrained from excess taxation as our populace not, has not had the means to pay large taxes, but now with the growth of consumerism, maybe sales tax is appropriate. Exploitation through taxation? Why not? Cool. And, oh, there we go. Nice. We get a level one. Good, good, good. The modernization of Chinese education is progressing by leaps and bounds. Already, the next generation of young Chinese citizens is enjoying education standards which had seemed unthinkable just a few years prior. Those who graduate from our reformed institutions are already beginning to make great contributions to the sciences, to the culture, arts, politics, and philosophy. Though the need for intellect is great in nearly all fields within China, we can attempt to make selective amendments to our curricula and to our teaching methods, thus encouraging greater interest in a specific field for the betterment of our nation. We have identified three possible fields which can benefit greatly from influx in professionals, namely the, the natural sciences for scientific research, the political and bureaucratic intelligentsia for developing the means of national government, and the technical subjects to further advance industrial efficiency. Ooh, erosive speed, political power, decrypt, decrypt. Um, I like the construction speed. I like the political power, but it's not very much. You do get more stability though. Research speed is okay. Humanities, engineers, and technicians. Cap and speed. I like this speed a lot. But getting more stability is pretty good, so let's go out that one. Not bad. November 6th. And we'll end with one more and probably teach... Art. I do want to get more PP, but... Mm, overseeing the teaching? Mm, mm, workers equals. Encourage intellectuals. That's not bad either. Great minds? Not bad either. I like that. Yeah. Providing a better education for people will increase their civilian spending. It is what it is. Chinese scholarship or alternative higher education. Well, let's go do literacy programs. The government is planning on implementing literacy programs to help with teaching our people how to read and write. Hopefully, this will be effective and we will speed up our modernization, followed up with probably with reforming the Chinese language. In order to make it easier for people to read and write Mandarin, a few officials have designed a reform of the language, saying that we should simplify the Hanzi that we use for our language. This would make it easier for many people to gain literacy. But if you enjoyed this video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow as we'll continue trying to modernize China. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.